put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Article Movie Review. Andrew doesn't exactly have the easiest life as a high schooler. The others make fun of him. His father is a drunk who sometimes physically abuses him. And his mother is dying. He does have one friend, though. His cousin, Matt, who is a bit pseudo-intellectual. Too much so for his own good, and coming from me, that's a bit... that's much. Anyway, with Steve, who is pretty popular and, you know, campaigning to be a high school president or whatever I'll call it in America, and the, you know, at a, at a party, they find this hole in the ground, and the, you know, there, there's a strange sound coming from down there, and they, you know, being teenagers, they decide to investigate. Actually, you know, Andrew is sort of the voice of reason. He keeps telling them to, you know, turn back, but yeah. Why do only they, you know, go down there? Because, at least apparently, other teenagers found that hole, you know, that's actually one of the few gaps in the writing. Yeah, I'm also not entirely clear on how they got back out of there, but anyway, down there, they find that they gain the power of telekinesis, all three of them, although Andrew definitely has got it down more than the other two. And that's just it. What happens when someone who's been downtrodden his entire life suddenly gains supernatural powers? This film could arguably be classified as found footage, but I think, I don't know, the term is like POV film. That actually kind of fits more. Because this is really, this is not just one camera. In fact, as it gets closer to the climax, it gets to be you know, numerous different cameras. And no, there's not really an explanation for who exactly collected all this footage and edited this film together. But, you know, it does have the, you know, the primary effect of a POV slash found footage movie, which is it puts you right there and it, you know, it's, it's extremely immersive. It really feels like you are right there with them. And this, it does some things better than numerous other POV slash found footage movies. When you think of, you know, both the pretty bad, such as Quarantine, and the, well, in my opinion, pretty good, such as Cloverfield. Yeah, what do those two films have in common other than the POV? The camera operator is barely a character. C could you even tell me the name of, well, you know, the one in Cloverfield is called HUD, and that's kind of clever, but other than that, you know, that's essentially it. They're, they're there to operate the camera, and they even have characters say, why are you filming this, you know? In this, you don't have that issue, because, you know, first of all, there's, you know, there's a pretty good explanation for Andrew filming everything. He is, you know, just... Even before this incident, he is just becoming gradually unstable, you know, and it's kind of, it's part to sort of document, 
you know, this is what actually happens to me, and partly also to kind of put a barrier between him and the rest of the world, you know, make, make it sort of a, a construction, a, a piece of fiction. There's a scene where he, you know, he sits at home and edit it, edits it very briefly, and you just, you really get this sense that, you know, he's just, you know, yeah, he's, he's just trying to distance himself from his own life, you know. And the camera is operated by, you know, all three of these friends. You know, it switches back and forth between them. And for a while, it actually makes pretty good sense that they are filming everything. Although, again, yeah, not everything they film actually makes sense. You know, there's like, why did they film, excuse me, why did they film this argument they had? You know, who would do that? But, you know, for a while, they're just doing what teenagers would do if they suddenly had these abilities, you know, they're just having fun with them, you know, throwing balls at each other and seeing if they can stop them midair, you know, stuff like that. No, you know, of course you're gonna film that, you know. And by the way, they get so good at the telekinesis thing that they use the, they develop the ability to fly, you know, and that is pretty kick-ass. And once or twice it's also kind of goofy, but still, mostly it is really kick-ass. And they do what all kids who have the ability of telekinesis and flight would do. They play the American football up in the clouds, you know, among a couple of other things. Now, the... I hoped that I got the wrong impression from the trailers, and I was right. Something like that. I feared from the trailers that our leads would be obnoxious, dumb kids. And they're not. They are really good characters. You know, you really get to like them. And it's not in the sort of, you know, they, they are interesting characters. They have qualities. They have personalities. You know, no one is just a goody two-shoes and no one is just evil incarnate, you know. It's actually, it's a testament to the film's character study, I suppose, that in spite of what happens later on, you never really lose all of the sympathy for, you know, the people you're not supposed to lose sympathy for. That's really all I'm gonna say. Yeah, okay, I know, it's not rocket science, but still, I wanna try to keep from spoilers here. And, you know, the various characters, I mean, even characters that are not, you know, are leads, it's of course important that you genuinely like, but even the situation with Andrew's father and mother, you know, yeah, this is not a spoiler, his father used to be a fireman, then he got injured on the job, now he can't work, and so he sits at home and collects you know, I guess, what's it called? Unemployment, something like that, you know, and just imagine that, imagine that drop, you know, to have been, you know, one of the most respected, I mean, still, you know, middle class job, you know, real worksman, but still, that it gets, it gives you a sense of pride, and to suddenly not be able to do that, and to have very little money and not be able to earn more money while your wife is dying. You know, that is a really horrible situation. And so, of course, he drinks. And, you know, it's, yeah, it, it, and this really comes across in the film. You know, you really do get a sense that, you know, it, it just feels very real, very realistic. I can't really think of any characters that weren't credible, you know. Uh, some of the bullies are a little excessive, but, you know, bullies in movies are almost always just slightly unrealistic, you know. They, they go further than real-life bullies a lot of the time. Now, this uses the, you know, POV really well by, you know, sometimes having the camera, you know, 
let's just say there's an incident with the flight and not everything works out quite as planned and the camera you know sort of doesn't stay up there and yeah so you have that really impressive visual and in general just you have these you know and like I say, when, when they start cutting back and forth between different cameras, you can they, they also make for some, you know, it, it makes for some very, very fast cutting and very different angles on things to where they can actually almost pull off what they do in a regular movie, which is just, you know, well, this is happening, so we, we want to get it from a good angle, so we shoot it from this angle. You know, we're not going to care that we have have to have someone be filming it, but no, you know, everybody's got a camera nowadays in, on their cell phone, so yeah, you know. Now, the... What's it called? I also quite like, you know, the, the writing is quite good, and, you know, very realistic, and yet, you know, kind of not frustrating. You know, there's this, you know, who doesn't hate? how in movies where, you know, characters suddenly get superpowers, they're just, like, retarded about it. And, like, well, I don't know what this really is. And, you know, just, you know, go find out what it is, you know. And so in this movie, you know, you've got Steve Googling on his smartphone telekinesis. And so he reads aloud the definition and, oh, yeah, that sounds like what we can do. Oh, sure, excellent. The camera work gets a certain amount of freedom from this telekinesis and from Andrew's kind of habit of floating the camera around, you know, filming the things that he wants. So we get crane shots, you know, we get pans and all this sort of stuff that you'd get in a regular movie, in a not POV movie, you know, because he's just floating the camera around, you know, and that also allows for, you know, scenes where you actually do see all of these characters, even though, you know, again, usually you'd have someone carrying the camera, you know, holding the camera. The acting is quite good. You know, I haven't really seen any of these people before, except maybe Andrew... I'm pretty sure he's Cody Webber, seriously. No, I... I haven't really seen any of these people in anything else, and yeah, all of them do really well. The, you know, the, the script is quite good. Like I said, there, there are a few holes and a few, you know, yeah. But it's, it's a very, very good effort for kind of this first time. You know, this is, I believe... What's his name? Max Landis's first feature script, you know, and yeah, he takes after his father. There's the humor in there, and there's the good storytelling. You know, this is a very well structured story, you know, and he really, you know, he really gets you caring about the characters and the story. It moves at a quite good pace, you know, with sort of the, you know, in that everything you see has been filmed by one of the characters. You do some, you know, a couple of, excuse me, a couple of times you have these sort of skips in time, you know, where you're seeing something and you can sort of say, sort of, ah, this is like weeks later, and this has happened, and this has happened, because, you know, yeah, there, there's this sort of, I don't know, I don't want to give away too much, but there is this relationship between Matt and a girl that sort of develops over the course of the film, and yeah, you don't really get, I don't know, It, it is sort of just implied a lot of the way where you have to fill in the blanks. And, you know, that is something that you can do as a storyteller. Have your audience, you know, put it together for themselves. And it is sort of 
it's a balancing act, you know, because you don't want to keep it too in the dark, and, you know, yeah, and, and you don't want to overly hint, because at that point you might just, you might as well just go ahead and show it, but this really does it well, you know. The film is quite taut, very, very tightly edited, you know, there's nothing, I can't really think of a single, single scene that shouldn't have been in there, or that didn't, yeah, in some way add something, F further the plot, develop the characters, you know, set up, you know, this, set the stage for something. There's actually, the, the party they go to at the beginning is this rave, and it's actually, you know, somehow, Andrew films it like you would, you know, like a Hollywood director would film a rave, you know, to really get the the energy going and that whole, whole thing. And that, that is kind of amusing, but, you know, we, we can forgive it. And again, that, you know, that again is something that all of these POV slash found footage films have to do. You, you still have to establish an environment and set up this sort of tone and mood, even though these people are in the situation and wouldn't necessarily feel like they have to, you know, shoot establishing shots and stuff like that. And, yeah, it, it works out quite well. I suppose that is what... The effects. They are excellent. You know, there, there really isn't anything... I mean, like I said before, there's a little bit of stuff, especially with the flying, that gets a little goofy. But it's very rare, and almost all of the way, you know, I, I especially wouldn't say that any of the effects are unconvincing, you know. I suppose that is more or less it. So, yes, it's quite tense, it's funny, it really gets you emotionally involved, it pays off. Yeah, just a good, I suppose, drama thriller with some comedy. Yeah, and, you know, a good, you know, relevant piece with all this, you know, yeah, young people, you know, going on, yeah, rampages with, you know, attacking other people. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.